evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome to our Monday Thursday service, and we do especially welcome uh, the visitors that we have with us here today. And I'm not sure if any of us are visitors, but we do have one. We have a little lizard that's <laughs> under the chairs over here. I promise you, I saw it when I was walking up. So if you see something walking around, you go, ah, it's not a spider, it's just a little lizard. So, what's that? Not a mouse. Not a mouse, not a snake. We've had snakes before. Uh, <laughs> You guys are wondering, why is he here? Um, <laughs> uh, so good evening. This is our Monday Thursday service. Uh, a couple notes about our service tonight. It does commemorate uh, especially the uh, institution of the Lord's Supper, but also we go to the Garden of Gethsemane and we hear the Lord praying and calling us to watch and pray. Uh, at the beginning of the service is a confessional address, I believe it's called. And that's, um, it, it's, it's traditional, and it's in the books, and we've done it every year. It is like an, a brief lesson in what the Lord's Supper is and does. And so I believe this has kind of a historic place in the Lutheran Church. And so if you wonder, what is all that he's reading? Uh, it's just reminding us, what is this Lord's Supper that we receive? Uh, and why does he give it to us? So we begin with our first hymn, hymn number 436. I invite the congregation to please rise and face the cross. Continue on page two of our worship folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God, I see the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Please be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, 
when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation. It is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin, and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve, so that we may more comfortably believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in a holy living. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking it into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ, and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread from, made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and truth. May the almighty and merciful Lord uh, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, and bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. 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 Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Now we have
haven't done this since before the plague, right? <laughs> since before COVID. But we greet one another with God's peace. We continue at the top of page six. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Amen. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the fourth and fifth chapters of the book of Hebrews. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplication, with loud cries and tears, to him who was able to save from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The Apostle Paul writes, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew writes, When it was evening, Jesus reclined at table with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him, one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. 
Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 629. <laughs> Thank you. 
from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On this Monday Thursday, we think we're coming to the end of the road, this Lenten road theme that we're coming to. We might think that the road ends at the cross, but we Christians know it goes one step further. But here on this Lenten road, the theme that we've had through these Lenten services, we could say what a long, strange trip it's been, right? We started out in Damascus with Paul coming to faith, and we traveled uh, to Jericho and Jerusalem, tonight to, to Calvary. We had the road home, seeing the prodigal son come home to a father who was prodigal with his love and forgiveness. We came all this way to the Bethany Road, and now to this night, we say, in which he was betrayed, right? This road to Gethsemane here, we see, is a road of receiving and giving. This road is a road of receiving that which Christ gives in his sacrament, in the Lord's Supper. And it is a road of trying to give as well. Jesus says, watch and pray. This road to Gethsemane, going to the garden to where the, Jesus there would pray, and he calls the disciples to pray as well. Watch and pray, he says, that you would not enter into temptation. We know temptation. Temptation going all the way back, even in the Bible's story, to the Garden of Eden. To the Garden of Eden, there the tempter, the serpent, would confront Adam and Eve, maybe Eve first, or you know, and then Adam, but we're not going to separate the two and blame one over the other. There the tempter came with the temptation that God has something he hasn't given them with the lie and the deception that God is holding out on them, and that what they are prevented from is actually something that would be of utmost good for them. And they see, and they are tempted, they fall. The temptation we know so well. It's always to go against the will of God, to go against God's teachings, to go against what he has put before us as good and right, to turn away from that and to follow our own desires, passions, our own faulty human judgment. Adam and Eve, they had everything good. Only one warning, only one tree, only one food that they would not eat. And he even told them, lest you die. He told them what the consequence would be. And yet the temptation was too strong. Their flesh was too weak, right? We know the feeling ourselves. We know the power of temptation. So Jesus offers us a gift of strengthening in the sacrament. He also offers us another gift that we can come and talk to the Lord. Watch and pray, he says, that we may not fall into temptation. We have this last teaching from the Lord, it seems, before he would go to trial, before he would go to the cross. You know those days where it's the night before you're going away and you're trying to get everything done, right? First you have to pack, and then you have to make sure that the pets are going to be cared for. And if there's some instructions you need to leave to the, the pool boy or something like that, you have to make sure that the bills are rightly paid and that there's nothing's going to come when you're gone. Oh, did I uh, halt the mail? And you have to wonder, is the you know, is everything in right order? And it might seem like that for Jesus, uh, might seem like that to us, is what Jesus has tonight. He's he has the Last Supper, and which is a Passover, and it is a, a good gift from God and commandment that they observe and remember the Exodus Passover, but that they also take Jesus' new direction and receiving the body and blood of the Lamb of God for forgiveness and salvation. Now, in the Gospel of John, we don't have the Lord's Supper, but what do we have in the Gospel of John on this Thursday night? Five chapters of teaching. He really wanted to talk to them before they all left. Now he reminds them again, and pray. Pray that you may not enter temptation. Jesus himself knew the power of temptation. 
the deceits and the lies of the devil. He was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil came at him with every temptation and power, with every possible trick. Jesus knows the strength of those temptations, and he knows the weakness of our own flesh and heart. In the, in the wilderness, Jesus would also know that a weakened self makes our, us weaker in spirit as well. Jesus knew the hunger and thirst of his body, hungering and thirsting, and their temptation trying to present itself. In the Beatitudes of Matthew, Jesus acknowledges, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be satisfied. Now, here tonight on Monday, Thursday, Jesus provides for our hunger and thirst for righteousness. And he says, take, eat, and drink for your hunger and thirst. Receive my body and blood for forgiveness. Receive my righteousness to cover you in the blood of the Lamb. Take and eat. Take, this is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. Sin is forgiven. And we receive new strength to resist temptation as Christ is with us. Watch and pray, Jesus says. But those disciples are again us. Go home and make sure you pray and are aware of temptations. And what did the disciples do? Fall asleep, just like us. Say your prayers. And Jesus tells them to pray, and then he prays for them. And that he's praying for their goodwill, but he's praying in their stead as well. They could not, so he did. And he prayed for them, for their life, for their protection for their goodness and wholeness, that they would be kept from the temptations of the evil one. He prayed for them and gave them proper uh, repentance and blood and forgiveness that night. We know. Watch and pray. Receive God's gifts for us that build us up. The word of God, which is like the bread of the Lord for us to, to receive and eat. The, the body and blood of the Lord to give us to satiate our spiritual hunger and thirst as we eat and drink. Because the world is full of those things that are enemies of Christ. The traps and the temptations. Those things that want to discredit Christ, deny or do away with Christ in any form or just try to cover him up so no one has to see or think about him. Those things that would want to make Jesus seem irrelevant or inconsequential or ineffective. We know it ourselves, the temptations of faith that say, is Jesus really what we say he is? Those times when we wonder, is it true? Is Jesus really for me? This last hymn we sang, why has God not forsaken me, we say. And then we say, oh, hear this taste and see, the Lord is free. Does any of it make a difference? Wonder. Jesus gives us his word. Jesus gives us the gifts of a sacrament for our strength, for our forgiveness, that we may also watch and pray. Watch and pray. Jesus even asks in his own prayers, if I didn't have to do this, Lord, let me know, right? If this cup can pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will, Lord. It is the will of the Father that Jesus go to the cross. For you. Jesus there on the cross will say, Father, forgive them. It is the will of the Father that through Christ you have forgiveness. Jesus will say, You will be with me in paradise. It is the will of the Father that he brings you on to his home in paradise. We watch and pray. We say with Christ, into your hands I commit my spirit. And it is the will of the Father to receive your spirit and to keep you until that day. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. <coughs> Let us pray for the whole
people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, by your righteousness, deliver our souls, which are precious in your sight from death. Embolden our hearts to pray and help us to serve you always in newness and holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, give us wise leaders and preserve us from harm. Guide our leaders to have discernment and to act with justice and mercy. Bless all military, emergency, and medical workers here and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would hear our prayers for all those who are sick. Refresh them in their suffering. Comfort them with your word and nourish them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, hearing again the proclamation of your New Testament, cleanse us through Christ's body and blood, which was offered for us on Calvary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves, our bodies, and souls, and all things. Redeem us, O Lord, faithful God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Normally, at this time, we would receive the offering, but that is not in our service tonight. If uh, We're going to go do the antibacterial thing. Uh, for our hands, uh, if this is a time for you to, to uh, give an offering, you can do that or any time during the service. Also, as we come, we're a smaller crowd, so I think we can come forward and uh, just kind of gather around. We might all fit, if not, uh, just be kind enough to, to wait for the next table. But, uh, We continue on page 208 with the preface. Please write. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, <laughs>
king of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us in his, as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
us rise for the post-communion calling. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The stripping of the altar is a historic practice on Monday, Thursday, to prepare the sanctuary for Good Friday. Good Friday, when Christ our Lord is stripped of all adornments, of all symbols of power and authority, stripped down to only show the humiliation of Christ, the humble humility of Christ. So during the stripping of the altar will be the reading of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb, and you made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him. All you offspring of Israel, for he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregations. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord. 
he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim righteous, his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. 